Well, good morning, everyone out there in social media world. Uh, it is Monday, November 9th. We are two days away from Veterans Day. I'm excited to celebrate our military and our veterans here this week with the Albuquerque Asfato Chamber. My name is Shannon, and we are coming to you live uh, to celebrate today Monday morning music. And we have a, a great guest today, a great uh, musician with us. And uh, I'm excited to bring um, Heather Russell into this conversation. Uh, we are being hosted today uh, by Holiday Inn and Suites Airport. And so I'm uh, excited to introduce Heather. Uh, so today what we're gonna be doing is, uh, or actually I should say on Mondays what we do is we have reached out to what is known as the creative economy. Uh, the people in, in our city, in our community who have suffered during this time because musicians, you know, they, they perform at bars and restaurants and events and weddings and, and festivals around. And since all of that has been canceled, we tried to come up, come up with something creative to share with you guys. Um, the, the amazing musicians that we have in our community uh, spend an hour with you so you can hear their, their, uh, their sound and what they do, learn a little bit about them. And then we teamed up with our other big industry hit during this COVID time, which has been our hospitality and tourism. And uh, we paired them together. So our hotels with our musicians and hope to bring you guys a little insight if you're looking for a staycation, what's available to you out there. And then when things get back to normal, or if you'd like to do a Zoom sort of maybe a serenade or have some music in your background, how you can hire these local musicians. And so today we're gonna to be joined uh, by Andrew Thomas. But before we get started, I wanna bring Heather into the conversation. Heather, tell us who you are, uh, what you do, um, and, and a little bit about the hotel. Hi, well, thank you for having me. Uh, appreciate it. Um, good morning. Uh, my name is Heather Russell. I'm the general manager of the Holiday Inn and Suites, Albuquerque Airport. Um, we have 121 rooms here, and 19 of those are suites. And we have about 3,100 square feet of meeting space. Uh, we are a full service hotel, so we have a restaurant and a bar, fitness center, pool, and hot tub indoor. Um, of course, those areas are currently closed due to COVID, but we're trying to accommodate as best as we possibly can. But thank you so much for, for having this year and allowing me to host and uh, thank you. So Heather, I know that you guys have had to make adjustments during this time, uh, we understand, but tell us a little bit about what amenities are available, um, you know, restaurant and, and how uh, people, um, you know, what can they expect when they come to visit? Right. Well, um, you know, right now, uh, sadly, the only outlet um, that is available or amenity that is available at the property, other than, of course, your lovely room, um, would be our fitness center. Uh, the fitness center is open. We st are still closed with our pool and our hot tub. We're hoping to get there. Um, we have a wonderful market that's packed full of food so that you can select um, and purchase some food there. And of course, um, do as much as we can to uh, help guests order anything from outside of the hotel and have it delivered. So you're in a great area. You, there's a lot of restaurants. There's a lot happening around your area. So yep. anybody that wanted to pull together a, a weekend away just to get away from the stress and everything that's happening in the world, uh, there is no worries because they will help you get food to your room or if you'd like to take a walk. Yep. I mean, there's so much happening in the area of the airport area, Gibson and, and uh, that area, right, is, is, is really uh, bustling with lots of restaurants and things to do. Uh, Yep. and what have you. So uh, you will not uh, be bored if, if you choose to stay with Holiday Inn and Suites. Now, uh, recently, Heather, you guys, um, we, we, we visited and I can't remember all the details. I was not available that day, but you left us an amazing little treat on our desk. And so mm -hmm. I want to say thank you to everybody at Holiday Inn and Suites who, who stopped in at the chamber and who uh, reminded us that during this time, it's important to stay connected and stay mm -hmm. um, 
people with each other so that we can continue to support each other. And uh, we want to say thank you for our delicious treat, our, our delicious gift. And uh, we look forward to continuing our partnership, our membership with you, and as well as our convention tourism, who hosts Monday Morning Music, um, to support the hospitality and tourism industry. And so, Heather, what are your capacities right now? What are you allowed to do by the state? And uh, how has COVID affected your team? Well, we are a, a, um, a New Mexico safe certified hotel. So we are allowed to be at 50% capacity, um, to which we steadily stay there. We have slowed a little bit because this is, you know, going into the slower time. Um, but we have a couple of great different groups that continue to stay with us that, that help us out in that arena. Um, you know, so that's been good. Um, our, our employees, you know, sadly, we did have to furlough some employees when this first started. We've kept in contact with all of them and we've brought some of them back. We have a good housekeeping group. We have a, a small little um, family up at the front desk to help us out. Um, I've got a great uh, group of managers that just do absolutely anything and everything day or night, um, so supportive uh, as, as the rest of the employees are. So we're trying to just keep the morale up as best as we can, you know, breakfast burritos, donuts, food, food is very important. Everybody loves food. So uh, bring in lots of Halloween candy, that kind of thing. Um, so, you know, we're trying to keep everybody's spirits up during this tough time. Yeah, and it, it has been tough, but I'm excited that you're starting to bring some employees back and that uh, you guys are working as a family because that is really the key right now is that everybody is supporting everybody within your own organization, but then also out into the community. So because of that support, we've been able to partner with Andrew Thomas today who is very well known for one particular instrument, though I'm not going to say anything yet unless you know him, but let's spend a few minutes getting to know Mr. Andrew Thomas. So if you could introduce yourself, tell us where you're from. Start by telling us a little bit about how you developed your love of music. Yes, thank you so much, Ann. Thank you for the opportunity. But I was a child, I was a child, I was a child, I a As I introduce myself, I come to you as a humble human being. As part of our kinship, I introduce myself through our clan, which we call the Navajo. And as I introduce myself, it tells me who I really am as a common man. I honored through my mother's clan as I'm coming in as an infant to walk this beautiful road of life. I also introduced my father's clan, which by that time, I'm actually an adolescent. As I continue that journey, I also introduced my maternal grandparents, which by that time, I'm a parent myself. So notice the road of life. And then finally, I introduce my paternal grandparents, which by that road of life, I'm an elder. To recognize all the life that have given us and to make the right choices through our means of spirituality. And as I go through our uh, method of giving back, I come to you, as I mentioned, humble, and to, know, to be no greater. That's one of the, the Navajo teaching that I don't see above you or below you, but eye to eye evenly. And I mentioned that uh, Navajo is more of a generic word, which we call ourselves Dene. Dene just simply means people of the earth. And we share a lot of commonalities as one will be the spiritual mother of the earth as we're connected. Father skies as we're connected. The heavens, the universe. As I call myself the Neh, I'm from the great the Neh nation, which is also known as Navajo reservation. But here as I 
come to you. We occupy this land by the givers of first givers, it's the Pueblos. And mm -hmm. I ask permission to the Pueblos that this is okay to do this. And out of humble way to give reference to their ancestors as well. So we're all as one creator, if you will, and we're all one people, one prayer, one mind, and one people. That's who I am. Big introduction, yes. <laughs> and that's just the way we, we operate, <laughs> as to be more uh, brother and sister relationship. So we actually go in partnership. So there's really no ties. Of, and then again, being no greater. Uh, the basic teaching is that all of our native peoples hold in partnership with our spiritual mother of the earth and father sky and created by the great creator. And by, by songs, there's endless songs, or dances. And what I mean by uh, endless songs is that a lot of our pueblos, they uh, hold homage to calendar years. My native people, my people do the same thing. So we're actually going to our winter season, obviously. And there's songs to be sung only during winter versus summer. So now I play this wonderful instrument <clears throat> and it's called wooden flute. This flute becomes the ambiance of the stability and the, the soothingness of, the, of that spirituality. It recognizes that natural order of life. And what I mean by natural order is like the physical sense of who we are, because we're able to, to maneuver. I can actually move side to side. And also my mental sense, thinking the spiritualness, walking the path of that red road in Lakota, or in Navajo, we call it Ating, that holy path, that sacred path, that balanced path. And then the emotional side is, yes, I am a human being. And I come with a lot of emotions. I change not as much with my surroundings, but we all love good news. We are going through hard times, but if we dig deep and just recognize your basic and counting your blessings of who you are as Reminder that there are some relatives out there that are in hospital beds, not able to move, but we can. Or there's some of our relatives that are in incarceration, they're not able to move, we can. So therefore in return is to count blessings. Is that good so, so, Andrew, I know, I, I think it's so interesting. You're such a storyteller, and that is why your music is the way that it is, and that is why uh, the way that your music flows is the way that it is, because it's deep. It's part of your culture. It's yes, part it of is. who you are, and it really it, it speaks to you, as you said, as a human being and, and how you share your incredible craft. And uh, so we are super excited to hear, um, hear you play, but I, I have to ask ask you, you know, was it who, who started you on such a unique instrument and, and how did you learn that over the years? Who, who was the one that was the inspiration? Who taught you this, this, uh, this way? Well, I'm glad you asked. It's a, it's a, it's a wonderful story. As, as being uh, a young individual, we heard a lot about mommy singing the lullabies, dad singing sacred songs, grandpas and grandmas and showing us how to ensure and to continue our ceremonies. So we always heard songs. We always heard mama's lullaby to keep in tune with the beat of our, which is the heartbeat of our mother earth. But I didn't play the flute. We sung verbally uh, like, wait, 
That's in beat with Mother Earth in partnership with Father Sky, which when you go to the Pueblo feast, it's the same connotation as to be in rhythm with our Mother Earth, with the beat expressing our things. So back to the question is that I did not play the flute until years later, which I have and I paid homage uh, to the Indian Pueblo Cultural Center. And being a sales rep, I need to learn about this wonderful instrument. Knew nothing of the flute. Our, our medicine people played the flute, whistle flutes to attract the guides, but in rhythmic to contact and in partnership of, of, of that spirituality. So with, with that being said, I started to come around this beautiful instrument and I thoroughly gravitated uh, early 90s and I excelled very quickly. And in 1994, I took my first international trip and I've been traveling ever since. The simplicity of this flute is that it also resonates the heartbeat of our people. And this beautiful instrument plays me. I don't play this instrument. And what I mean by that is that one will ask, oh, what key do you play it in? I have the slightest idea. The most common I hear is in, in the key of G, A, and F. But it's just like asking the Pueblos about their songs, what key do you play in? but it's the rhythmic that we knew from our ancestors that was in their heart. From in their heart, the rhythm of the beat has always been that heartbeat of our mother earth. So I started playing this and giving it life is that, that rhythmic. that vibrato becomes a heartbeat. And easy of, for me is that we've been taught to pray from bottom up, from head to toe, as we sing our corn to grow from that root straight up. So I've been told to play always from the bottom. So this is considered an Indian beat or an Indian, I, should, I, I say Indian. We don't enunciate our word completely. <laughs> um, you know, it's funny that that word Indian is not from here. Obviously it's uh, based on Cur Christopher Columbus's story, traveling the world and supposedly discovered you know, North America as being oh, the site of back to India. That's how we end up with the word Indian. And the funny story about that is that um, Columbus travels worldwide and lands here, or not even here, but uh, we always claim to be a discovery. And then it says, oh, this is the, the country that I've been to, but it looks like they're Indians from India. So we've been end up with Indians, the word Indian. But the funny of the matter that I'm glad he wasn't looking for Turkey, right? <laughs> Otherwise, we'll call it circus. Anyway, so, so Adam, you, well, have humor, you have humor as well. I have to tell you, you're you're an incredible storyteller. And Andrew, what we're going to do is we're going to move forward so that we can hear um, you play. And we did start a little late this morning, so we're going to go ahead and go till ten fifteen, so we can get the full forty five minutes of your incredible, incredible talent. Um, I want to thank one more time um, Heather with Holiday Inn and Suites Airport, and I encourage you guys to get out there, create your own staycation. Um, you know, it, we have a beautiful city that we live in and we understand that we're in unique times right now, but most importantly, we want you guys to get out and we want you to feel safe. And when you do, 
visit Holiday Inn and Suites um, at the airport. Uh, they will take care of you. So thank you to Heather and team. Now, uh, Andrew, Heather and I are going to uh, mute our videos and and sound. Uh, so Heather's probably going to have to hang up her phone. And um, and we're going to let you be the screen. You're going to become the, the full person on the screen. And then John's going to uh, let you know when you have about five minutes left and you can uh, say that that's going to be your last tune. And um, I just want to thank everybody for joining us um, when we do Monday morning music. We really love hearing from our local artisans and we appreciate everybody out there. Please stay safe in the community, practice social distancing, stay home when you can. And I hope that you enjoy the next 45 minutes. I've had the pleasure of hearing Andrew play before, but I hope that you all will uh, take to heart his incredible spirit, his incredible music. And we hope you guys have a wonderful week. Uh, Andrew, take it away. Thank you so much. Will do. beautiful, <clears throat> very soothing number. This actually was, actually was composed. Well, I mean, most of the songs are actually composed. Uh, but that particular song is called Shin Asha, And it's a reflection of I walk in peace and balance. And as I speak, that's what we really need today is to walk in peace and balance.
I mentioned earlier that most of the songs that I create is more in mind of being self-taught. And I usually work with the wood. I don't change the ambiance or to key the flute. It's whatever the flute has been given is given it back to me. Meaning that um, I don't change the rotation of the notes or I have to key it or whatever the sound offered, I made it into a song. And most of these are unkeyed and some are keyed. And I usually make a fun of it because my wife's name is Key. He says, oh, I found the right key. That's my wife, Key Straits, Dr. Key Straits. <laughs> Notice this particular one that has a a smaller chamber. So the smaller the chamber, the higher the octave. And usually the wooden flute, a lot of our native peoples, the woodland areas and all of our local um, flute players, they like the cedar. Because cedar has a little uh, resonant in it. You don't have to apply a lot of vibrato to it. And it's more soothing and for more healing. Well, this one here is to enunciate to the gods, if you will, that we are asking for prayers, for healing, forgiveness, and give us blessings. And this is a five bowler, which is more of a, I call it an Indian scale, which I make fun of it, and I call it Indian scale, with being an Indian rather than Indian, because that's not our word. We, we call ourselves um, native peoples, and the biggest word we hear today is indigenous peoples. Uh, but we have our own name, like I am. They always ask me, what, what, what nation or what tribes are you? Are you, are you? Or they'll, they'll say, or oh, are you Native American? Or are you American Indian? Or are you First Nations? Those are all good words. But ask me, what nation am I from? You know, we say we're Americans, but we're all Americans. But a lot of our Native people were here before America. So I am from the great Dene nation. That's who I am.
That particular song was called A Horse Riding Song. And a lot of our peoples, they, during those times, they rode on horseback and you have to get to a destination. And to get to that destination, they're very spiritual at that time as well, is to sing this horse riding song, which is in rhythmic. I'm riding the horse and also back to the heartbeat. And to give provisions of your surrounding, if it's okay and permissible to travel and to bless us and keep a lot of harm's way. And I think a lot of our, our native people today practice that, I still do, uh, is to give not only thanks of your surrounding, but also to give to the Holy One that you are here and existent and resilient, uh, that we are here and we're still practicing our way of life as opposed to being religious. Uh, our culture is still strong and our tradition is very, very strong. That's who I am, uh, as to give a to give, not necessarily back, but to give, and also to think about our youth, our children, and to practice with, with fortitude, gratitude, uh, to keep this alive and continue who we are as uh, Native peoples, because in our, in our, United States of America, we're proud to say, or I'm proudly to say, we have over 500 nations and tribes, which is about 564, 63, depending on who you talk to. They're all recognized, some are self-sovereign, and the push will be self-determination of who we are as Native people. So we're, we're, we're very proud in that way.
everybody's doing well and keeping asleep here. I mean, keeping awake. No, 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 no. Keep, keeping asleep is okay because what it does is that the magical powers of this beautiful song, not necessarily mine, but flute in general, really gives you that sensation to relax oneself. The movement is so soothing and soft that you can actually go to another dimension if you allow it. So by, by that, most of the flute songs are also through the art of meditation, through the art of healing, through the art of getting families together and expressing this wonderful unionship of who we are. That's how a lot of our native peoples, they gather seasonally to bring us back together. Even though we're going through hard times as we speak of this horrible pandemic, but our native people have been practicing of this isolation to continue to be resilient and to be part of this citizenship of worldwide of who we are as strong people with our cultural still intact, embodying this tra traditional ways to continue And I think it's very gratifying to say that a lot of our songs or dances is to continue and it always will prevail. And to ensure this, we have to instill our youth, our children, how important this is. And more so the language. As I travel the world, I, I tell my, um, the citizen of the world, people of color, people of the earth. The language is very important. And I speak this foreign language, English. But as I talk to my own people, the Dineh, let us speak our own language. And how important that language is is to ask our World War II veterans, the code talkers, how important that language is. And that's in any languages. Pueblo languages, they speak different languages. Tewa, Towa, Wenatowa, Keras. They're still strong, they're still resilient and they're still here today, just like my people and all the nations and tribes in this hemisphere. So speak your language, doesn't matter where you're from, come at See, it's important to, to speak your language. <laughs> Thank you. 
There's a beautiful um, story behind this wooden flute, as a lot of our native peoples, especially up north, the Plains Indians, <laughs> uh, is that to speak of this beautiful bird, which becomes a tuner. As that tuner, there's this young man that wanted to attract this young woman, and he's failing at every cost. He's a, a brave warrior. Uh, he can defend his tribe or who he is by this bravery. He provides, meaning that he can hunt uh, any season and to bring back food for his family and his village. And he's also a giver, meaning that um, during ceremonies or if he's needed, he always will, willing to lend a, a helping hand but could not attract this young woman, beautiful young woman. And you know, he has skill of riding the horse. He does, she doesn't look, none. Muscular body, handsome man, she doesn't look. So he, he felt defeated and decide, decided to sit under this beautiful cedar tree to think of a, what will be the next step. But he noticed there was a woodpecker doing its job of pecking on a limb and once in a while will peck a hole through that limb. As the movement goes, the wind people will swish, if you will, through the chamber, which is your chamber here, and made a, a distinctive sound. That young man thought, hmm, oh, that's interesting. That's the gift from the creator. What does it mean? So as the day, days went by, and he fashioned this, what is to become the wooden flute, flute during that time, and made up a song. And as he made up that song, that beautiful young woman looked around. I said, oh, that's a song that um, I never heard. And it's going to her heart. So a lot of today, a lot of our native people use that as to serenade the women because of that beautiful, soft connotation and by that most of the uh, wooden flute is called courting flute mine is more healing slash courting slash you know uh, a music instrument of of the world because it, it really brings uh, people together this is coming off a, an album that I um, made several, several years ago called Changing Woman's Blessings. And that gives re-gratifying of who we are as, as people of the earth, as to count our own blessings. You know, when people ask for, you know, thousands of dollars to make them happy, our teaching is that to count your blessing within the circle, the family, your extended family, food to eat, you have roof over your shoulder, and all that love and comfort from your grandparents, your parents, your 
brothers and sisters, your relatives and your extended relatives. That's how rich we are through songs and dances. And that's just another reflection that this beautiful instrument made this song called Changing Woman Blessings to give us wellness and blessing. And it came out of a, I made a CD, like I said, I made a CD several years ago and it's called Changing Woman's Blessings.
as my closing. Thank you for the opportunity. And also want to thank my, my brother, Mr. John Lewis, who gave me the opportunity to do this. And he is from the great Islada nation. Zuni, I'm sorry, Zuni. Um, and it says, oh, and the net. So he's um, uh, hooked on <laughs> a little bit of Zuni. <laughs> Cache. That's it. Yeah. And having that opportunity, this is my closing song. And this particular song is actually um, song one of the, the hardest for my people. That, nah. During the, what we call the long walk, and after the long walk, we were incarcerated uh, for four years, one of the harsh treatment, and we've never been exposed to that kind of a treatment with foreign diseases and malnutrition and things of that nature. But as we were going back to our, our the Nebuchadnezzar, Navajo land, they saw one of our southern sacred mountain. Oh, everybody was in, in joyous, all crying with laughter and they were happy. I just suffered one of the worst atrocities. And what they felt is that, the, that hope, hope they're gonna go home revitalize their lives, hope for the, uh, the betterment of the nation and nations around us. And with this horrible times in our lives, you know, we can't even share our, our hugs, our kisses with our loved ones. And it will pass, but we gotta show resilient we got to show hope and to re-render and render our prayer. As native peoples and as people of the world, the commonality starts with, the commonality starts within ourselves. As people of the earth, citizens of the earth, we suffer just the same. We cry just the same. And we laugh just the same. But we have to come together as one. Because our native teaching is that there's only one mother earth. There's only one father sky. There's only one prayer. One God. And one people. This is called Shina Sha. Shina Sha just simple means I walk in peace and balance. Shina Sha, Shina Sha, Shina Sha, be careful, Jean La Eya, Naya. Shina Sha, Shina Sha.
Thank you so much.